Hey guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone. Uh, this one is going to be a response video in regards to my Christ Conscious video I previously just did. I have a reply here from a commenter named Orange Man Bad, who says, The Trinity isn't just who God is, but what salvation is. Unlocking the Trinity is God's plan for salvation. We are invited to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, as our bodies are the temple of God, as the Bible tells us. This is why Jesus says we can become one as he and the Father are one. The Father is the sower, Christ is the vine, and we are the branches of vegetation. So while I agree with you on many of these things you say about New Age and Christ consciousness, I don't think you yourself have a full understanding. This leads to theosis, which is the ultimate goal of Christianity, becoming one with God. I'm getting the sense you're a Protestant, so you likely weren't exposed to these realities, but this is what all the original cultures Christ and his apostles built, believed. Coptic Church, the Catholic Church, the Oriental Church, Russian Orthodoxy, Eastern Orthodox, Antiochian, etc., which obviously accounts for the majority of Christians. So I'm just saying, mocking Christ's consciousness doesn't really do you justice. Knowing God doesn't mean just reading the Bible. There's a way to experience God through mysticism from all traditions, but ultimately Christ fulfills. Also, if you only stick firmly to the Bible and its words, why do you quickly go to the blood and body and say it is clearly a metaphor? I just think you're being a little manipulative and shady in this video, that's all. Okay, so first I'd like to just say uh, thank you for your reply. I'm very sure many people in uh, the Christ Conscious community will find that to be very insightful. Um, and now, uh, let me just respond to that part about Jesus saying, we can become one as he and the Father are one. Uh, the Lord brought me to John chapter 17, verse 6 through 11, where it reads, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So, yes, you're right. This definitely means that we can become one with God, but there's a caveat here. Jesus said, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. This means that God the Father is the one who chooses you and hands you over to Christ. It is the Father who draws us to the Son, so that those who believe on the Lord Jesus may have salvation. You actually have to come through Jesus Christ in order to have oneness with God. All right, so let's move on to the next part of your reply. I'm getting the sense that you're a Protestant, so you likely weren't exposed to these realities about the Trinity unlocking salvation. But this is what all the original churches Christ and his apostles built believe. Coptic Church, Catholic Church, Oriental Church, Russian Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox... Antiochian, etc., which obviously accounts for the majority of Christians. So I'm just saying, mocking Christ's consciousness doesn't really do you justice. No, that's a misconception. All churches, if they are indeed Christian churches, are based on the same doctrine that Jesus originally preached about in the King James Version of the Bible. Now, there was a dark period in time when the Catholic Church tried to undermine the original works of the biblical text by inserting non-canonized books like Enoch in there um, that were not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you would like to see more on that, you'll have to just get to the end of this video. But as of now, the King James Version of the Bible is the most accurate book that we have uh, translated from Greek and Vulgate Latin. And again, uh, throughout all of the denominations you've mentioned, the Word of God is the same. Those who believe that the Son of God came to earth to die for our sins will have everlasting life. This is not a metaphor either. You have to really believe that Jesus literally came as a man in the flesh and died on the cross. 
And I'll, I'll back this up with scripture out of Philippians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, now as for the etymology of the Holy Trinity, that word Trinity is not in the original manuscripts, and so it's not in the King James Version of the Bible either. And yes, I am a Protestant Christian, and we do have a fundamental understanding of the Trinity, despite it not being used in the Bible. We have a passage out of 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, that does allude to the Trinity. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So, there you have it. So, having an understanding of the Holy Trinity is not what gets you saved. You can idealize and philosophize. You can go on and on about some profound allegorical understanding about God and oneness as much as you want. But if you leave out the part about God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, and Him sacrificing His life for your sins, you will not inherit the kingdom. And the alternative to that is eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. Okay, and lastly you said... Knowing God doesn't mean just reading the Bible. There's a way to experience God through mysticism from all traditions, but ultimately Christ fulfills. Also, if you only stick firmly to the Bible and its words, why do you quickly go to the blood and body and say it is clearly a metaphor? I just think you're being a little manipulative and shady in this video. That's all. Okay, let me just address this part first about knowing God doesn't mean just reading your Bible. Because uh, this is very serious. Okay, look, there's no way that you can know that Jesus came and died for your sins unless you've read his word. No one is born into the world with innate knowledge to seek their salvation through Christ. Or that you need to repent for your sins. Or knowledge on how to combat spiritual wickedness. The answer to these things are written in the word of God. The Holy Bible. Uh, so let's take a look at at Luke chapter 4, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And what about Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 16 through 17? Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so reading your Bible is an absolute must. It not only informs you on how you can get your salvation and teaches you how to combat spiritual wickedness like Satan, but reading the Bible helps you stay connected with God. When we pray, we are talking to God. But when we read the word, God is talking to us. A Christian who doesn't read their Bible is a Christian who has been disarmed. Okay, uh, so next you were talking about there being a way to experience God through mysticism from all traditions. And I'm going to go ahead and address that. And just say, not all traditions, but... Uh, this, this is true for a subset of people who haven't heard uh, the word, and um, those people will probably never hear it due to them being born in a country where Christianity is uh, suppressed, like in North Korea, in remote areas around the world that haven't come into contact with the modern world. These people, however, will be judged differently because they're defined as Gentiles and heathens. And this is stated in Romans uh, chapter 2, verses 14 through 13. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them in the day when God will judge 
the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. This means that God has written his law on our hearts. And so when people sin, they actually know that they're doing wrong, whether they've heard the gospel or not. But what Gentiles cannot be held accountable for is worshiping idols or false gods or mysticism or whatever, since they haven't heard of Jesus. But let me be clear. This is for people who have not received the gospel. I'm not talking about unbelievers who receive the gospel, uh, uh, but rather, uh, you know, they'd rather be like an atheist because they prefer to live by logic than faith. People like that are already on their way to hell. Which brings me to you, sir. You clearly have some in-depth knowledge on theology, as you've articulated in your post about the Holy Spirit that seems indicative of someone brought up in the West. And so, having said that, I'm inclined to believe that you've received the gospel. But if you haven't, I already told you the path of salvation. And so, you won't be judged by your heart like the heathens. So come judgment day, you'll have no excuse when you stand before God. You won't be able to say no one told you about Jesus being the only way. Because Jesus will say to you and all the rest of the Christ consciousness people, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of lawlessness. All because of what? You wanted to cut your own path to the kingdom rather than taking the path that he told you in his word. Which is why you really have to take Jesus' teachings about salvation literally rather than figuratively except when he is obviously speaking in metaphorical terms. And this is why I read John chapter 6 verse uh, 54 through 58, Jesus' parable where he talks about eating his flesh and blood. It's because this is the metaphor that unbelievers mock and point out as a literal interpretation when it's obviously a metaphor. Oh, oh you said we should interpret Jesus literally here. Well, well look at this verse where he uh, talks about people eating his flesh and drinking his blood. That's why I, I read that one. All right. And I'm not trying to mock Christ consciousness. If anything, Christianity is mocked more than any other religion in the world. And for those of you who are in the Christ consciousness movement or what have you, please seek Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior because tomorrow is not promised to you and the clock is ticking. Hope this clears everything up and uh, hope you have a blessed day.